Okay. Hello. This is the Lemon Drop Sessions, a podcast about food and music. Uh, we're doing a second talk with uh, the MMA fighter Kenyon Moore, who just won in the ring at Mohegan Sun, April 20th. Uh, same day as the Ryan Garcia fight, I feel like I have to mention because <laughs> I'm sure that must have crossed your mind at some point. <laughs> yeah. I actually had no idea what was going on until I was sitting at a restaurant after the uh after my fight watching it on one of the big screens. I don't I don't follow it that much, but it was exciting to see. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Getting to relax and just watch someone else kind of do the thing. That that must be nice. Yeah. That's that, that's actually probably a pretty unique moment like to like have finished your own fight and then you see another fight on TV. That's kind of wild. That's yep. Yeah, it's like wow, I was just doing that. That's incredible. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. yeah, what else would you say? So what was uh yeah, man, uh so you won. It was time to celebrate. What uh we're we're a food and music podcast technically. It's the Lemon Drop Sessions. Don't know if I nailed the name drop on that, but uh, what did you have for dinner to celebrate this crazy win? Uh, so I had braised short rib tacos and a bacon avocado cheeseburger. Yeah. That's a great one, man. The double, <laughs> yeah. double trouble. I love yep. it, man. Love it. All right. That probably set you right after. <laughs> how long yeah, I was stuffed. Yeah. Uh, how many cool rounds? About... Was... Sorry. How... I have... What were you going to say, man? Uh, I said the cool thing about fighting at Mohegan is it's like it's one of the only places that has Krispy Kreme donuts like uh, that <laughs> factory. They make them like right there. You can eat them right off the conveyor belt. But uh, I ate the burger and the short tacos. I was so stuffed. I had to save the Krispy Kremes till the next day. I didn't, I didn't go get them that night. Yeah, man, definitely. I uh, yeah, Krispy Kreme is is one of a kind for sure. For sure, there's nothing else like it for sure. That's crazy. I was at Mohegan Sun like not long before we started talking i didn't even see the crispy cream thing i saw a bunch of crazy stuff i saw the new hell's kitchen thing with gordon ramsay and i saw uh wall burgers which i was actually pretty impressed with um where's the crispy cream at then to be honest there's like a small one in like the main like shops area gotcha. uh and the bigger one, I couldn't even find. Uh, I tried looking for it. I ended up sending someone else to go get them in the morning. But I, I would have to look at the map of the place because it's uh, it's like a maze in there. It's hard, it's hard <laughs> to find everything you're looking for unless you're real familiar with it. Yeah. Well, that's rad, man. I'm glad you uh, got what you wanted for sure, big time. Um, so I just, just in case you know, people from around the world can technically watch this. So I just want to mention that Mohegan Sun is a casino. Uh, in Uncasville, Connecticut. Uh, a lot of big shows come through there. The comedian Jay Farrow was there. Uh, all sorts of stuff. My like e Everlast, who's the singer songwriter, one of my favorite guys. He's come through there. Um, very cool, man. Um, so yeah, how uh, how long was the trip in full? Like getting out there for the fight and waiting and everything. It was like a four day thing. Uh, I went out Thursday night. So mm -hmm. I was there Thursday night. I was there all day Friday, all day Saturday. I fought Saturday night and then uh, I was stayed at the casino Saturday night and I uh, was there until Sunday around like midday. So about three, four days. That sounds really nice, man. Very cool, too. Uh, what about what was Friday like? I mean, it's the day before the fight and then you have yeah, all so day on Saturday, too. Yeah, Friday was good. I mean, I weigh in on Friday. Uh mm -hmm. so I wake up I had I my the weigh-ins were like earlier than normal. So I had to wake up real early and, and uh sweat out the last little bit of weight I had left to do before I weighed in. And mm -hmm. then uh after that I pretty much spent like all day Friday just laying down and eating <laughs> and putting <laughs> the weight back on until uh until um you know it's bedtime. So Yeah, yeah, right on, man. Yeah. That's uh is it literally all day? So you just did the weigh-in first thing in the morning and then just ate till bedtime? Is that true? <laughs> yep. No, that, uh, yep. I, I, I consume fluids and food from, I weighed in at 10. So then I spend all the way until I fall asleep, just eating food and drinking, putting the weight back on. What did you eat? What did you drink, man? That's pretty interesting. 
Yeah, so I try, uh, I start out, like there's a rehydration protocol for after you weigh in, and, and generally it's like a PD light cut with some water, uh, and you drink that like uh, in 15 minute segments until for like the first hour, so that you don't like uh, hurt your stomach trying to reintroduce fluids and stuff. Wow. And then uh, first thing I eat is like overnight oats. So I soak oats in uh, coconut milk and I add a lot of honey and chia seeds and blueberries and cinnamon. Wow. Um, then I make a, it's like a, a, a ritual I do every camp now is I make like uh, guacamole from scratch. So I bring all my own ingredients, a little cutting board and a knife and a bowl and everything. And I make it right in the hotel room. Um, and no uh, so I make like enough like i make six avocados worth of guacamole and i eat all of that and then um i drink about two gallons of fluid uh with liquid ivs in them and uh more pd light and then after that i generally have like a pasta dish with chicken and then a rice dish with beef and whatever else i want after that whether it be like uh different fruits and or um more rice and meat and that sort of thing that's fantastic man uh tell you what if uh if you're willing to uh share your guacamole recipe, I think that would be a gas. We could publish it. It would be really cool, you know. Uh, I've got a lot of good reviews about it. Yeah, I'll have to get back to you about that because uh we might maybe get there's going to be some more like printed word going on with this podcast, you know, on my LinkedIn and also uh um we have like a little blog website that I'm setting up and maybe we could drop your uh, guacamole recipe. That would be awesome, man. Yeah, I'd be down that for sure. That's great, man. Thank you. That would be awesome. Yeah. I'd be really thrilled. Uh, you know, because uh, I also noticed what you said. Uh, you soak the oats overnight, right? Like that's a really, that's like top tier. Watching your health, like you, because because you soak them to get out these like uh, negative kind of ingredients, right? In the in the oats and and also in rice, you can soak rice. Yep. Exactly. I think it's like phytic, phytic acid or lin linoleic, linoleic acid, something like that. That's supposed to make it more difficult for your body to absorb nutrients. So you soak them overnight and it, it's supposed to remove those. Yeah. yeah. So are you 10 for 10 with soaking your oats or are you ever like, I'm okay. <laughs> I can have normal oats today. No, I don't eat normal oats to be honest. Like, uh, or like, or hot oatmeal. I, it's just like eating concrete. If you ask me, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, I soak my, I, uh, I've always soaked my oats. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, good for you, man. Yeah. So uh, in our uh, last talk, this was actually I, this really interested me. Like after we talked, like I really thought about what you said with this, like, you know, you kind of listen to this uh, sometimes. I mean, not like literally every day, but you'll listen to Pavarotti, this opera singer while you're training. Um, you'll listen to Chet Baker, you said, while you're training. It was pretty cool, man. I really, uh, I really liked that. And, um, uh, how often would you say you train, you train to uh, music like that instead of maybe whatever else? Oh, so I put on like, uh, Louis Armstrong and Chet Baker pretty much whenever I get the chance, like every once in a while, I'll throw like some sort of gangster rap in there just because I'm yeah. feeling like something a little more bouncy, but, yeah. um, for the most part, if I have control of the music, it's going to be uh, it's going to be Louis Armstrong radio on Pandora is what I'm going to be playing as far as like uh, working out is concerned. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I think I think you did mention before that you use Pandora because I was wondering, like, you can't just like be monitoring the stereo the whole time. So Pandora keeps it rolling. That's yep. really cool. So um because it's Pandora, though, how often do you do you remember any of these song titles? Do you like do you hear a Chet Baker song and go, oh, that's uh, so on and so forth? Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, I mean, it throws a bunch of different artists in there. But uh, mm -hmm. and I think Ella Fitzgerald is another one that's on there a lot. There's like a Fly Me to the Moon is one of my favorites. Um, nice. And then to be honest, I can't remember all the titles. I recognize the songs and I can tell you who they are, but. I don't run over to my phone and, and see what, what, what the titles are, but definitely fly me to the moon. There's, um, yeah, I'd have to look back. No, it's cool. I was just curious. Back, yeah. And, uh, how long is like a, like a daily training session? I, I think we might've gone over this, but like it just a day of training. Is it like three serious hours or six serious hours or, 
It's you like know? generally um, like two hour and a half long sessions. So I'll train for an hour and a half in the morning and then I'll train for an hour and a half in the evening. Right, 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 right. Okay. And um, would you ever, would you ever train longer than that? If like, yeah, occasionally they, they'll go over and sometimes it's shorter. Like sometimes we'll do just sure. like a, if, if it's martial arts related, it's generally an hour to an hour and a half. If we're mm -hmm. uh, going over something super specific, we'll slow it down and it'll be like a two hour session. Um, and then sometimes we just do like um, conditioning, like weightlifting and, and cardio stuff. And that could be anywhere from like a 20 minute session to a 45 minute session, depending on what we're focusing on with that. Um, so it does vary. It's just averaged out to be like an hour to an hour and a half each time right on um so uh i watched one of your stories after the fight and you said that uh the fight was through reality fighting promotions and you said they were awesome like in your story you really liked how they handled things uh can you get into that a bit what what was so impressive yeah, so they, 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 between reality fighting and the Mohegan Sun Athletic Commission, everything was just super smooth. Um, most of the time, the, the times that I fought before, weigh-ins are later on in the day, and the athletic commissions are not ready to be like when they're supposed to be. So you're showing up there already depleted and agitated and weak, and then you got to wait out, you know, like you're supposed to weigh in at 3.30, you don't weigh in so until true. 5. Um, and then you have to stick around for uh, face offs and pictures and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, with this promotion, they had to show up at 10 o'clock, which means that we have a, a considerable amount more time to rehydrate. All we had to do was step on the scale and get off and then we could go we could go rehydrate. And then we had to go back later for things like pictures and rules meetings. So that was really convenient because as a competitor, like you, you show up, you weigh in and then you're able to start eating and drinking again um and then for the the rules meetings and the ticket reconciliation and the pictures it was uh, also really smooth you show up six hours later feeling much better than you did prior they mm. were really good about getting everyone in and out um with like pictures and stuff like that and because they take care of like rules meetings and stuff the day before on friday as a competitor i don't have to like report to the venue until like an hour before i'm actually stepping into the cage Whereas wow. other promotions, they'll do the rules meeting and a bunch of other stuff like uh, before the event even starts. So right. if I'm not going to fight until 930, I still have to show up at 3 p.m. and I'm not allowed to leave throughout that whole time. Yeah. You know? man. And uh, so I got to hang out in my bed with my friends and, and <laughs> listen to what I want to listen to and joke around and, and get a much like appreciated extra rest prior to have to you know, show up to the venue, sit in the warm up room, watch people warm up. Absolutely, out, man. Come back all beat up and bruised and maybe lost and have to witness all that, which doesn't really bother me, but it's much better just being in your room. You know, it, I was a little nerve wracking because I wasn't sure if I was going to show up there and then be rushed to get into the cage, but I wasn't at all. And uh, right. it, it was just like a much smoother, enjoyable process than I've had in other situations. That's great, man. Yeah. Thanks for taking me through that. That's uh, yeah. And, and by the way, I want to mention that whole thing of, uh, cause I really did try to do some uh, MMA type research before our talks, you know, and that thing about the Pedialyte with the water, right. After you've cut weight, that's, yeah, that I, that's not something you just pick up somewhere, you know, like, um, when I was researching a friend of mine, he sent me this video and he said it was like one of the first like videos of UFC ever, like the biggest professional thing. It was like in England or maybe Australia or something like that. And the first fight that I saw from it was like sumo versus Sabate. Like it was just literally like two guys. They both knew totally different things. And they just like threw them in a ring together. Right. So, yeah. uh, can you say sort of uh, which fighting styles you might have used during this fight? Yeah. So, uh, and I've said this has been like my strength since the beginning is I don't have a strong basis in any one style, which you see like a lot of fighters, they, they say, oh, I'm a wrestler or I'm a boxer or this and that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think in some way that 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 means like they, they're really strong in that one category. But I, I started it all at the same time. So I'm like... Uh, well-rounded in that aspect where like all of my martial arts tech like uh styles are catered towards what i'm going to be doing in the cage 
Um, mm. But I would say like mostly like it's um it's like Muay Thai kickboxing um mm -hmm. and jujitsu and like um freestyle wrestling is generally or like the three main main things that we focus on in my gym and, and that are in the styles that i feel like i've adapted towards uh my strategy very cool and so like in a training day right it's an hour and a half and an hour and a half right so if you're training you just pick one martial arts each day or you or you mix it up uh so we mix it up um we have like a uh, little glove and big glove training days, meaning like mm -hmm. uh, it's always MMA focused, but sometimes we'll wear boxing gloves where our fingers aren't exposed. So that's going to be like a striking heavy day where we focus more on striking technique, but there is still wrestling involved. And then there's days we use like smaller padded MMA gloves where it's like our fingers are exposed and we just got like a, a big foam ball on top of our knuckles. So, and then those days would be more grappling um, focused because we were able to have different grips with the, the different style gloves. Um, so we right. generally, I do like a little bit of both every day, but one has a stronger focus in either grappling or, or, or not. Right on, man. Right on. That's awesome. So um, did you take any uh, cuts? Did you have to get fixed up at all between uh, rounds or... No, no up. cuts. I mean, I had like a little scratch here and, a, uh, you know, a little scratch on the side of my nose. Um, my opponent had a really good jab. So he was hitting me with his lead lead straight um, mm -hmm. a few times. So my nose was pretty busted up on the inside. Uh, I'm still like blowing blood out of it today. And it hurts. Wow. But um, and I think my nose bled a little bit, but they, they, they stopped it bleeding in between the first and the second round. And then uh. I did a little bit better of not getting hit after that. <laughs> uh, so it didn't bleed as much after that. But uh, so, yeah, they busted my nose up pretty good, but no, no lacerations or anything like that. Um, I came out pretty unscathed. I got like a little black eye over here and my uh, one of my right shins pretty bruised up. But uh, all mm -hmm. in all, I'm healthy and I've been fortunate enough to like come out of all my fights pretty healthy in that sense. Yeah, man, that's definitely great. That's great. 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 Um, so. Uh... Like besides, like obviously, it, I'm. It feels awesome to win. I, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that. <laughs> it's like, um, uh, what does it sort of mean at this point in your career to win? Like you won, and then what's the conversation? Like, did they actually go like, okay, you won, and so now we do this, this, and this, or are you guys kind of waiting to see what happens next? Um. So like I'm one and one as a pro right now on the regional scene. Uh, this win for me means that I'm doing the right things, right? That right. That, that I I'm being uh, successful in my intentions with my training and my preparation. Um, I haven't really discussed with my coaches that much what the next step is. I knew I went into this year wanting to fight four times, which means mm -hmm. like if I stick to that, I'll be fighting again early July. Um, and I think I'll just like gradually, um, try and build my record with similarly skilled or more skilled opponents, like on a, you know, building up, but there's no like real big step up from here. It's I'll take another fight in the regional scene unless I get it, like offered a, a short notice, like big promotion fight. Uh, um, right. and which could like happen. A, yeah. Honestly. Right. It can. Right. Yeah. Like that's what every big boxing movie is about. <laughs> yeah. You know, get a call up to the big leagues. <laughs> uh you got called up into the big leagues. <laughs> but, um so uh is it difficult at all to fight find a good fight on the regional level or is it just like you just start putting feelers out there and you can make it happen? Like would yeah. it would would yeah, all right, cool. Like yeah, you would so, say yeah, I I've got a, I spent a lot of time, like I found all my own amateur fights, right? And I did that with like uh, pretty, I mean, it wasn't easy, but like it just mm -hmm. like took good communication skills and, and diligence and like uh, researching the promotions that are hosting events in the area and reaching out to their matchmakers um, as much as I can, you know, like making those connections and, and communicating with those people to get them to match me with guys that are, you know, my weight class and skill level. Um, I haven't had any issues on the regional scene finding my own fights thus far. Everyone tells you you got to get like a manager to have, find fights for you, but right. that hasn't been my experience. Um, I right. also spend a good amount of time finding fights for other guys on the team. 
So uh, I'm, I'm, Very cool. oh, I'm decently connected in that sense. Uh, so I haven't had any issue with it so far. I mean, once I get up to the bigger promotions, I don't know how that's going to fare, but I'm just going to take it a day at a time. Yeah, it's so, man. I mean, honestly, like, yeah, this from time to time takes more or less communication depending on, you know, doing the podcast. Like sometimes it's really insanely easy to, uh, you know, you know, like, 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 this is great, man. You, you've been great through this whole process and I really appreciate it. Um, you know, and, uh, some of the comic book writers I've interviewed, they were really on board and, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. Communication is definitely important. Um, I, in our last interview, I like tried to tell you about this like boxing movie that I had watched to, yeah. you know, and, it didn't seem like you had heard of it. And I was like, uh, <laughs> like but, uh, but, um, it was bleed for this, right? Is that what it was bleed it was? for this? Yeah. 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 Um, you'd have to remind me what the storyline is. I've probably seen it, but I've seen a lot of fighting movies. So I, I don't know. Well, that, that was my segue basically was I was sort of, I don't, it's not like a blame you. I actually, that one bleed for this in particular was like on my list for a while and I didn't get to it, didn't get to it. And, uh, so it was a great excuse to try that movie and, and learn a bit more about uh, how they got there, you know, in terms of making the movie. And honestly, um, you know, I watched Southpaw recently, the Jake Gyllenhaal boxing one, and, and that was just a really, it just felt like on a technical level, like a really good movie, you know, and okay. it kind of like got me back into it. Um, but um but yeah, so like you've seen so many fighting movies and that was that that's where I'm trying to go basically is like uh what are your Kenyon Moore the fighter, the MMA fighter? Like what are your fighting movies, you know? Like which one do you like watch and go kind of like that's not true, but I love this movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh so definitely my my number one uh fighting movie ever is Cinderella Man. Um with James J. Braddock, that, that is my go-to. I, I probably watch that, like, more than I'd like to admit. Um, yeah. It's just, it's it's wholesome. It, it, it's like, it, it, I just really like it. My coach tells me it, it, I remind him of it, so that's probably why I like it even more. Uh, <laughs> that's a really nice thing for your coach to say. That That is a great movie. I like that one, too, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's a good one. Um, and that one, you know, like it's an older movie, but it, it's realistic, you know, as far as like the fight scenes and stuff are concerned, I feel like anyways, um, other fighting movies, okay. like obviously you got like all the Rockies, um, with Sylvester Stallone, um, mm -hmm. are good ones. There's another one where two brothers end up fighting. One of them's a teacher and the other one's like some delinquent warrior and, uh, what warrior or something. yeah warrior yep so I, I literally, literally like saw that. that movie on like the other side of the world because i was studying abroad uh in in fiji which is in the pacific islands and um and movies are actually really cheap out there and okay. i saw warrior and you know to not be in america and see this very american story i was yeah. just like wow man wow you know it was cool yeah, so that's a good one too. I like Warrior. Yeah. Right on, bro. Right on. Yeah. Uh, Cinderella Man. I actually um, the lighting in that movie is really good. <laughs> that that's the might be a weird thing to say, but like, just there was something like the the fighters really like kind of had this like glow under the in the ring, and like and like all the dust and stuff. It was really cool. I I like I like that choice. I thought it was great. Yeah, I think it really like uh personifies like the grittiness of what fighting is, you know, and like the mm -hmm. the the struggles that you can go through within the fighting world outside of the ring. It's good. Yeah. Right on, man. I mean, uh, yeah, like uh, struggles, especially in like this day and age. I mean, it's like we have so much very convenient things. Allegedly, it's like allegedly we can do whatever we want. Allegedly, you know, it's like. But I mean, uh, how do you approach maybe struggle outside of the ring? You know, because it's true. I mean, honestly, even in acting, even in light performance like this, the podcast, you have to kind of like set certain things aside and, you know, be 
just kind of feel refreshed even if you're not you know so like um do you have any 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 tricks of the trade for dealing with life outside of the ring yeah well yeah i mean like just uh learning how to be mindful of like my emotions my primary and secondary emotions not being like you know like a lot of impulse control mm -hmm. and like uh you know, managing fear and self-doubt are, are like huge, um, mm -hmm. you know, because there, there's like, we're very, uh, uh, what's the word when you step into the ring and when you're choosing to do something like this, we're like very vulnerable in a sense, right? Because we're putting like our life choices out in front of everybody to see, you know? Wow. So like, uh, you have to like really like be a master of your own mind and being aware of like, uh, you know, how you're feeling and what you're thinking and, and, uh, and just mostly just mindfulness um, and, and impulse control, I'd say are like the, the biggest factors for me and staying calm and cool and, and on the right path. Do you ever uh, sort of write down ideas about fear or anything like that? Did you ever like get a perspective on fear that you were like, Oh, whoa like that's that's me that's original that's how i can deal with fear like is, could you share one like that um i mean like i don't know if i have any original ideas because i think you know like everything's been thought of and I, i've been exposed to more things than i could remember mm -hmm. um but definitely when i'm dealing with like fear uh mostly it has to do with decisions i'm either i either don't want to make or or um and i just like make sure again that i'm mindful that i'm not making fear-based decisions right that even though i'm afraid of the outcome of something i'm not allowing that to dictate uh how i make my choices um you know and uh am i gonna right. face everything and run or no what is it am i gonna there, there's some like acronym for fear but right. I, I don't know but that, I use that a lot. That is it turn tail and run? <laughs> that would honestly be pretty funny if you couldn't remember that. turn tail and run. <laughs> like, no, no, I think it's a cuss word. It's a, or, or no, you, oh. it's like uh, F everything and run or face everything and recover. I think that's what it is. Well, yeah. since I started podcasting, uh, the the rule of thumb is like a loose rule on swearing. Like We should be able to swear sometimes. You're just like, Try not to just go fucking go for it. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to keep it PG ish. So uh, no, it's like it's it's kind of crazy because it's like there's no there's no real regulation technically. Like we're on the internet, we're on YouTube, you know, like plenty of stuff is on YouTube. But it is interesting to think about just like yeah, I don't know. It's kind of cool. Like people kind of keep it keep it manageable with the swear words since this podcast has started like it you know like i was just trying to be okay with it i don't mind like a swear once in a while but it's just sort of happened that like people have really kept curse words out for yeah. the most part yeah yeah i mean it's probably good it like it applies to a bigger audience but at the same time like how many youths are going to be looking up a podcast on food and music <laughs> too so it's gonna be a more mature crowd i think <laughs> i really not. do want yeah no seriously well yeah i mean uh yeah totally right man like i you're absolutely right like um since i started also i wasn't really aiming for youth so i was aiming for people our age you know with this podcast um i do wonder about yeah how many podcasts are young people listening to um i don't know they seem pretty with it in some ways you know you just Every generation yeah. is different. That's for sure. Heck yeah, man. What do you think? Uh, I mean, honestly, yeah, UFC is really kind of blowing up right now. You know, it seems to be really popular. Like, what do you think for the sport? Do you think you'll be traveling further and further out or... Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, so right now, like I said, I'm fighting on the regional scene. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, by next year, I'd like to be signed to like one of the bigger promotions and start fighting like nationally, you know, or at least, or, or even better like, internationally. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, like that, that's the plan is like fight regionally this year, next year, fight all over the country. And then, you know, ideally all over the world. 
As far as you know, what are the big uh, cities or states in the U.S. for UFC? Because some are well, definitely more yeah. popular than others. Las Vegas, definitely. Um, the T-Mobile Arena, the UFC Apex Center. Um, you know, they have shows in Brooklyn and uh, uh, where's another big place they have? They have shows down in Miami, um, Vancouver, Canada, a, all over the world, you know? Like, I heard uh, there's a UFC place in Pennsylvania. Is there? There's probably a UFC gym I, in Pennsylvania, I think. I heard there was a gym maybe in Pennsylvania, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah right yep. on, man. Right on. Well, heck yeah, man. You got your win. Uh, so you're thinking maybe July for the next one, right? That's what I'm aiming for. Like I said, I haven't talked to my coach yet, but I'm hoping for July, like early July. Very cool, man. Um, I, I'd i really be happy to find a way to to bring you back. I mean, this has been a great kind of, uh, this has been really fun for me too, you know, kind of uh, watching this play out. It's been really awesome. Uh, thanks for bringing me into your world on this, man. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate you having me on. Thank you, yeah, man. Um, hey, man. I mean, it's not every day, uh, even for me, that we were on a podcast. So, uh, is there anything you want to throw out there? I mean, yeah, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I don't really have anything prepared. I just like I'm. I'm glad to be here, and you know, like in the startup of your podcast journey, and in the startup of my MMA career, and. Heck yeah. You know, hopefully they both like grow into what we we hope for them and uh yeah all yeah the viewers absolutely keep watching that's know? a good sentiment man and uh and i just want to add that uh it's not your fault that you didn't have anything prepared i really don't i really don't clue people in ahead of time it's really bad that's it's cool. totally my fault 